Um, so as a classical and jazz musician, how do you think that you can bring aspects from jazz into classical and classical into jazz? They already are in each other. There have been many composers, Gershwin, Bernstein, Stravinsky, other composers used elements of jazz and march rhythms. Now with so many contemporary composers, they use improvisations, just bless you. School playing with drums and uh, in terms of uh, classical music and jazz, a lot of the foundation of our music is classical music, way of writing counterpoint, developing the cycle of keys, the keyboard technique, goes on and on and on. There are many things that are combined in, in the root. And then there are things that you will come up with and we all work on different things that, that incorporate aspects of classical music. That also is a part of our tradition. Prejudice and ignorance, many times with jazz, made it be separated from it. Mainly, some of it was racial, but not all. A lot of it was class and the perception that classical music and things of a higher level of, of, a, of quality in terms of engagement and time and development were looked down on other people. So for America in general, there was the the thinking that it's highbrow music and classical music is not really our thing and jazz is lowbrow music. You know, many of these kind of class perceptions and things that have, that are that are traditional to stay with us today. But when you're doing something, you don't you get past that. Like I was auditioned to go to Tanglewood when I was 17 by Gunther Schuler. He was a part of a movement called Third Stream. When I talked with him or went to his house or met with him or dealt with him, he never came to me with any prejudice or ignorance. He always embraced me. He came to me with love. When I got, was older and I was making records, I could always call upon him. I went to his house once and studied. He, got, he coached me on how to play some, some, some uh, contemporary music for a trumpet album. We talked about recordings. He played French horn in the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. He also played on some of Miles Davis's records. So the whole kind of feeling of division, of course it exists, but there are always musicians who didn't do that. And I can tell you that same thing is true with conversations I had with Leonard Bernstein. It was never, how can we keep the music separate? And many times, the truth of how people deal with each other is not what becomes known. Like, if I embrace you, nobody cares. But if I hit you, man, it's going to be everywhere. So, um, I think each person determines how they can bring styles and things together, but realize that we also have a lot in common. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, thanks. I, I always ask that question because I don't know if I'm being clear enough. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, hello, is this on? Can you hear me? Then how do you know what I just said? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, has any, anybody here heard uh, Darius Mio's music, like uh, Creation of the World? That's from 1929, I think it is. And if you listen to that music, it is all about jazz. And here's a classical composer who in 1929 was already embracing and bringing elements of jazz into his music. And jazz was really young at that time. So if you listen to that, put on Creation of the World, Darius Mio, it's got an alto sax part, it's very jazzy. He was checking out Duke Ellington. He used to go to Duke Ellington's concerts. He used to go down to New Orleans to check out the music. Then if you check out Dave Brubeck, he loved Darius Mio so much he named one of his kids after him. So goes like that. There, there are all these relationships, like what Ted pointed out to you. Many times we deal with things in terms of the name of stuff, cool jazz or this, a third stream or that, but beneath it, it, there are people and those people knew each other. Dave Brubeck studied with Mio and, and he loved Duke and Dave loved, loved Duke also. They are, the three of them knew each other. So there are personal connections that people make with each other. And those personal connections are very powerful. And that's also part of why I tell you all, with your colleagues that you're meeting now, younger people, connect with them. See them. Take down some numbers. Get to know them. You'll see them. Yes, sir. 